How do you find the will to fight back against a world that wants to keep you sedated, average, and stuck in place? Join us for the tools and strategies you need to create a life of abundance, discipline, and high achievement. This, this, is, this is the Tactical Empire with Jeff Smith. Hey there, welcome to another episode of the Tactical Empire. How you guys doing today? I uh, wanted to bring to you guys, <clears throat> lay out the game plan and the blueprint for how you go ahead and create year over year results to grow in every area of your life. Um, in our groups, we run the four F's, which is family, finances, fitness, and freedom. And we're trying to push the boundaries of those areas constantly. And what we're doing is we're looking for expansion in each and every area of those, those four pillars, right? So we're focusing on evaluating how we're performing in each of those areas. How are you becoming or how are you behaving as a father? How are you behaving as a husband? How are you doing with your wealth creation, income creation and providing for your family? What's your leadership look like? How are you taking care of your mental health? What do you want to structure your schedule like? Uh, your organization, time blocking, all of those things for efficiency so that we can do, be, and have whatever we want. But that takes deliberate and intentional like lifestyle by design work. And the number one way that I've found to do that over time through trial and error is through annual planning. Okay. And so we had just done a call in my inner circle about this this week. So I wanted to break it down for you guys on this episode and tell you how we do annual planning and what works for us. First of all, um, if you're not in alignment with the people that are in your house and your spouse, uh, that is the number one thing to get in alignment on, right? If you're not, if you're growing and your significant other is not, and there's a gap forming between you, that's a problem. So like each party in the relationship needs to be doing similar work as far as like you're growth minded, you're trying to improve, you're trying to expand these areas of your life to be more, have more and do more, Right. Um, if that's not the case with one of the parties in the relationship, it's going to be a problem. So when I say that to say we do our annual planning as a couple, um, individually we plan and then we bring it together and kind of mold the plans together so that we're both aware on what our priorities are and what we're trying to do. And for the last three years, we've been doing it that way and it's been exponential growth for our family and for our finances and our wealth and everything else. Um, prior to that, I was more, my wife will admit this, that I, I was more of the growth mindset person. I did more of the personal development side of things and she was not participating in that just because of the age of our kids and everything else. And like, just that wasn't her priority at the time. Um, so we went through a lot of battling about that, that we had to get on the same page. And uh, so that was a tumultuous period of time to say the least, but what it, what came out of it was a connection between us that we are a team and we're driving together um, in the same direction. And, and we've got shared goals and shared targets and we're, we're working through things together. So I, I say all that in a long-winded explanation that your foundation has to be secure before you start like pouring these personal development items on top, right? So make sure that you get on the same page as your spouse or significant other so that you're, you're everyone's working with a growth-minded attitude on where you're going together, right? And then when you go to do your annual planning, I'm going to break it down real quick so that we can get through this, but I want to give you like a template and an outline to go through it. And if you just shoot me a message on Instagram or whatever, and I can send you the outline or email me at jeff at the real jeff And if you have questions, I'll send you the outline. No problem. 
uh, but it's what we're going to cover kind of. And so the first thing that you want to do when you're planning this is we get away. So we go somewhere without our kids, without interruption, without distractions. And so we're doing this trip in, excuse me, in a week, which is why it's kind of top of mind right now. So we went through it with our group of guys, gave them the blueprint, and then um, we're going to go do our 2023 planning. And ultimately, the way you do it is you want to get into an environment where you can focus and kind of get away from things and think about what what you want and what has gone on in your life. So the first part is reflection. So you want to look back, go back 12 months and say, okay, what have I done? What successes did we have? Um, What misses did we have maybe? Or not failures, but learning opportunities. And so when I set my goals for this year, what did I miss on? Um, And so you kind of want to make a list of those. You have your successes. These are my wins. These are the areas that didn't go as planned. And then did we have any change of direction? Like I had a goal of this specific thing and it didn't happen because we instead decided to relocate or something. I'm making up an example. Um, But you want to note those areas of change. So if you if you change the direction of your goals throughout the year at some point, why? And you want to note the why so that you can reflect because this whole exercise is a better gaining a better understanding of yourself um, and your spouse and your family and what's operating, what's working, what's not working, what needs shed, what needs added to the mix so that you can do all those things that you want to be doing. So. The first thing is reflection, like I said. Then you want to review your personal habits over the last year. So we're still 12 months back. We're looking 12 months back. Your habits, your schedule, your productivity, and your routine. Okay. So what was working? What wasn't working? What habits did you pick up this year? What habits did you give up? Like maybe negative habits that you got over and overcame and changed um, how was your schedule? Were you time blocking? Do you need more time? Did you have enough hours in the day to achieve everything you wanted to? Or do you need to adjust your schedule going forward? Does that make sense? Uh, productivity. Like, how were you from a productivity standpoint? Sometimes, um, for instance, you're getting your kids ready for school in the morning or something and it interferes with your morning routine. Do you have to adjust things? Uh, block out time and prioritize yourself later in the morning or how does that work, right? So these are all just questions you should ask yourself. Like I've got my own answers to my own situation, but you you have to address these questions with yourself. How How is your routine? Were you on point or what could be dialed in? Do you need to be doing more work on the weekends? Do you need to prioritize your 5 a.m. to 7 a.m. on Saturday and Sunday? Are those your areas to make progress with two extra hours in the day without family interference? Stuff like that. So that's where you're asking questions on how did the last year go from an individual standpoint on more of a micro level. Then you go and the next step that you would do is you want to go ahead and do a vision exercise. So this is where you truly go off as an individual, not with your spouse, just alone, where you have no interruptions, and you want to go ahead and cast a vision of where you see yourself like a thousand days from now, three years from now, right? Whatever resonates with you. You need a piece of paper and a pen or a notebook and pen, and you want to write this down and you want to thoroughly describe each and everything that you want or that you see yourself in that setting. So a lot of times when I go through this, I describe what I'm looking for, which is like, where are you at? What is the climate like? What do you do with your days? What does work look like? What does your bank account look like? How do you travel? How do you spend your time? Um, what do you do with your kids? Where are your kids at? What's your family life look like? I, I want all these still shots or movies going through your head. And you want to get 
connected to them on a deeper level so that you know why those are visions that you're casting, right? So where do you want to be in three years? Um, if there was no limitations on what you could be, right? So don't worry about where you're at today. Just say in three years from now, I'm going to be this, right? So when you write that, it, it, it could be a couple pages long. It could describe where you're at. You want to understand that feeling and then you want to kind of go there and connect with it as far as your subconscious goes. Um, but then the the key is that you have to go ahead and balance that because you can't have this undying anxiousness of like going where you're trying to go that it makes you actually miserable with the whole process. So this is where I missed for years because I was just like more, more, more guy. And I wanted to be at a different level all the time, regardless it, how many wins you stack up, it didn't matter. It wasn't enough. And so what that led me to was like this, this level of discontentment in the moment. So I wasn't happy. I wasn't present necessarily because I was always wanting more. It was never enough. And so you have to go ahead and balance that with like, wow, we're right here. This is really great. Like I'm so fortunate and it's balanced with gratitude, quite frankly, like that is the answer. Um, all the things that you're grateful for, your health, your family, their health, um, the roof over your head, the food you've got to eat, all the stuff that you need to be grateful for because you're super fortunate. Um, you have to understand that even though I want this three years in the future and like ultimately that's where I'm going, I have to kind of step back and say, man, we've come a long way and I enjoy the entire process because everybody uses the cliche uh, to fall in love with the process, right? And I understand that. But what you really have to do is have this level of patient aggression, aggressive patience to your vision. And what that means is you have to kind of regulate your level of patience, but you have to continue momentum. So that's where like critical tasks come into play and things like that, that you're trying to, you're trying to push on each of these areas that are going to impact your life constantly so that you can keep momentum going. It doesn't need to be some groundbreaking like target that you're hitting necessarily on a daily basis, but you want to just touch that thing and you want to move it forward. You want to push it. You want to make that phone call. You want to do whatever it is to keep that momentum going on each of these things. And then what happens over time is that you'll find that you achieve the things that you want much faster than you believe that you could, but it, it happens a lot faster than people think it will, but they don't have the patience generally to go past the like three months, six month mark pushing on something and chasing that vision, right? So that is part of the issue with why people are holding themselves up and creating blockage in, in achieving their goals and their ultimate visions. So that patience, persistence, and aggressive patience, right? You you want to make sure you're just understanding the process and keeping that momentum going. So from there, you've got your three-year vision. Now you're going to distill it down to one-year targets. And the way we do that in our group is we do it based on the targets fall under finance, fitness, family, or freedom. And like they categorize in that area. And where do you need to move things in the next 12 months so that your life would be substantially better and that you are moving in the direction of that ultimate three-year vision that you're going to. And you lay those out as targets, right? And then what we teach or talk about, one thing that I teach and talk about is that which target out of those that you laid out is going to have a domino effect. So, there, there's probably likely one target that if you achieved that particular goal, the other three or other a few of the other ones would take care of themselves, right? So for instance, if you had a revenue goal or a personal income goal, if you hit that goal, your goal of 
two weeks in Greece with your family or taking your in-laws on a trip or taking your mother or father on a trip of a lifetime that's a bucket list or something like that. The, the money or the revenue goal would be the domino target, right? Because if knocked down, then the Greece trip happens. Make sense? So that's just an example for you guys. But you want to target that one goal that if achieved, those other things will happen on their own. And that's the one you kind of want to focus on more than anything, making sure that momentum is rolling. All of them need focus, but make sure if you can identify that domino, like go ahead and focus on it. Then when you do your 12 months, 12 month planning, you want to have a good, better, best outcome to each of your targets. So if possible. So Todd Herman taught us this in a workshop that I was at, but so just using the revenue goal, cause it's easy. Um, so that you understand you, you want to set a good target, which is where you want to be that that would be good. Okay. Then you want to set a better target, which is a stretch goal on, okay, we're going to increase that revenue by more. And then you want to set a moonshot target, like, holy shit, this would change our lives if this number happened. And you want to write them all down. One thing that he actually said was don't have um, like round numbers. So set them off. So if millions, your target, 1 million and $1 or 1 million and $13, you want it to be something off of a lump sum um, because it resonates in your brain differently. So once you've got all this down, you want to physically write this plan out with a pen and paper because you're 50% more likely to achieve the targets that you lay out if you actually write them with a pen and a paper rather than typing them. And so I don't necessarily say, um, because I type mine up after we're done, but you need to do this initial planning from your three-year vision all the way down to your one-year targets. You need to do that on a piece of paper, handwritten with your pen. Um, there's lots of studies out there about the additional productivity necessary to do that because something about brain stimulation and neurons that are um, activated in handwriting. There's like 17,000 neurons activated when you write with a pencil or a pen, as opposed to like eight when you type on a keyboard. <clears throat> so using electronics is not nearly as effective for goal setting, target setting, achievement as writing things down with a handwritten pen and paper. Because what you're doing is you're imprinting that mission that you're stating for yourself. You're imprinting that in your subconscious. And so what it allows your body to do, your brain to do, is your brain goes to work solving those problems for you 24-7. Okay, so oftentimes that's why we wake up with new ideas or solutions after a good night's sleep, because our brain has been our subconscious has been working on those targets while we've been sleeping or working to solve those problems while we've been sleeping. So don't take that for granted. Um, I write everything out, all of it, and then I type it up on my notepad um, on my phone so that I can. Well, I mean, I type it up on my laptop and then share it to my phone so that I can read it all the time. So I'm always constantly looking at these, checking back to them, uh, just to kind of continue to print that in my subconscious so that we can solve these problems uh, faster. And that's how we do annual planning, guys. I mean, we break it down a little further as far as daily habits and things like that, but I'll get to those on a different episode. But ultimately, you want to take things, you want to get away. And, oh, I didn't, I left one part out about bringing the vision together. So the three-year vision is where you guys do it individually, you and your spouse or significant other, and then you're going to come back together and connect on what your vision was, what your spouse's vision was, and then kind of mold them together at that point. Okay. This is what 
we want to achieve. And that, that's an opportunity for great communication and questions to be asked and things like that about why you want certain things, or I didn't know you wanted that, or I didn't know you want to travel here. Um, how can we make that happen? Blah, blah, blah. And then when you break it down into your one-year targets, um, that's also, you want to bring those together as well so that you can support each other on the journey. And so if I've got a goal of running an Ironman or something like that, you definitely would want to plug your spouse in on that. I mean, Kurtz and I have four kids under 10 years old. I would have to certainly um, have her support to be able to train for something like that because it's not like you can just go out and run it. You've got to put in a lot of hours training. And so <clears throat> this is an opportunity for you to grow as a couple and also be very deliberate and intentional about where you're going, but it also helps you be able to understand where your partner's trying to go. And so it allows you an opportunity to be able to support them. Sometimes you figure out what you need to structure um, your schedule like or their schedule like. You need to make moves from your organization standpoint. You need to delegate a lot of things. This is what we spend a lot of time talking about in the masterminds that I run. But like, this is an opportunity where if you want to do this in the next 12 months, we're going to need to get whatever, food made, laundry done, someone to mow the lawn, like all this other stuff. So as you guys decide what's important for you guys as a couple, this is what I want to do. What does it take to make that happen? And sometimes it's delegation just to simply get things off your plate so that you can carve out time for these things because your kids are important. Your mental health is important. Your performance is important. And so like, how does it all work? Because that's what people are always questioning. Like, how do you have everything? Because you can have everything. It's just a matter of being deliberate and organized about these things. People say they don't have enough time in the day, and that's just bullshit. They're not intentional with their time on what they want to do, and they don't do exercises like this and sit down and actually figure out what they want and where they're going. So my advice to you, don't be reactionary coming into 2023 and just let whatever come your way happen, right? So be deliberate about where you're going and intentional about your moves, and you can get wherever you want to go a lot faster. Okay. If you want to hop in one of our groups, obviously that's an opportunity you can have. We'll provide support and accountability in my inner circle, or um, you just hit me up on Instagram or on email, and I'm happy to help you guys with this journey, help you improve your life, help you improve your family. That's what I'm here for. So that's what reverse engineering your lifestyle is all about. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you have questions about your annual planning, your three-year vision, let me know. Uh, happy to touch base anytime. So have a great week. Go kick ass. And I will talk to you soon. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the show. Make sure you subscribe, leave a review, and share with a friend. We'll, we'll, we'll see you, we'll see you. on the next episode, next episode of the Tactical Empire.